Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be taking a walk through New Zealand's dark and tragic history. We'll be discussing a tragedy so harsh that it shook a community to its core. Why you might be asking? Because this event was so out of place for this tiny, trustworthy little community. On the 28th of September, 1949, a farmer in Moa Creek was brutally murdered in cold blood. Till this day, there are no suspects, no apparent motive, and the killer has never been found. I have to tell you guys, when I was researching for this video, the more I was trying to dig for information, the more questions that I had left, the more answers I wanted. But unfortunately, I could not find them. Let's jump into the video and I will tell you what I know. This day began like any ordinary day for Mr. McIntosh. He was a farmer, so he was probably up and early. He was doing his errands and his chores around the farm. And at 2.30 p.m., he told his wife that he was going to go and round the sheep and come back at 3 p.m. to listen to the rugby game. That was the last time that he was seen alive. But before we get into the details, let me tell you a little bit about William. To the community, he was kind, generous. He was a loving husband and loving father. He had a grown up family. They couldn't even think or picture why would someone want to hurt this guy? He was just a great, decent man. This is another reason why this was so shocking. On that dreadful day, on the 28th, William did not come back to listen to his rugby game. But it wasn't until 7 p.m. that his wife got concerned that he wasn't coming home. She looked out and the sheep were still in the valley. So this was a red flag for her. And she called the neighbor and she was like, hey, have you seen my husband? They're like, no, we haven't. So she immediately called the police. After she reported her husband missing, the police acted quickly and quite swiftly. They arrived at her house and launched a search party. At 8 p.m., one hour after Mrs. McIntosh called them, they found William's body. They found him in his woolshed barn and what they found was so disgusting and sickening and distressing. They found his body was cruelly battered. He was bruised, beaten and cut up. The wounds were so severe that the police immediately thought that he was murdered with an axe. <sighs> After two days of searching for the murder weapon, they found it. But remember guys, this is 1949. 
So when they found the ax, it was stained in blood. But they couldn't tell whether it was animal blood or human blood. After the initial shock of finding his body and the murder weapon, the possible murder weapon, the police began to investigate. And they were knocking on every door, trying to get interviews, trying to find a loophole, trying to find someone that could have a grudge or a motive or something. But the more questions, the more people they interviewed, the more puzzling this became because, believe it or not, William was adored by the community. He was literally a stand-up guy. Everybody thought that he was a decent, hard-working farmer. Honest, generous, you name it. He was friends with everybody. Which just... Uh, makes it so tragic. Now, when the police, um, this is where it gets a bit, a bit odd. When the police interviewed Mrs. McIntosh to see if she had noticed anything unusual, anything peculiar, whether um, William's behavior had changed somehow, um, to see if there was something that could lead them to some answers, right? Mrs. McIntosh said that on the 28th, on the day of his disappearance, after he left at 2.30 p.m. to round up the sheep, a man that she's never seen before a stranger walked behind the door, or walked through the back gate to her house and asked her for the directions to get to the neighbor's house. She told police that basically she didn't think anything of it because they live in a trustworthy community. So she gave him the instructions to go to the neighbor's house. But the police came back and were like, all right, let's find this stranger. So they were again going back to the community, to the neighbors and saying, did you see a stranger around here on the 28th? Not one person saw a stranger around the community. Now, another lead that they had was that one of William's brothers came and told police that on the 28th he saw a strange car drive by while he was looking for the mailman in his van and again um, this became another empty lead because the police went to every to the mailman and asked him, did you see any strange cars on the 28th? And he was like, no, I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything weird. And he actually, and I quote, he said that the roads were actually quite quiet that day. There weren't that many cars out on the 28th. So again, this lead fell through and no one else apart from this witness has seen this strange car. So the police were starting to hit a wall and no answers, no one could lead them anywhere and these, this strange car and this strange man were not fitting anywhere. So they came back to Mrs. McIntosh and asked if they could speak to her again. But this is when her, like Mrs. McIntosh, William's daughter, said to the policeman at the time, my mom doesn't want to talk to you anymore. She's in distress. She's told you everything she knows and you interviewed her too many times and she's just not feeling it. Like, please leave her alone. And obviously, this sounds a bit concerning, but again, it's 1949. So people 
uh, probably the police were like, oh, you know what, this has been really tragic, let's leave her alone, let's not ask her any more questions. But they did say they didn't have any problem getting statements from other family members and from members of the community. And they did state that they had only gotten four statements from Mrs. McIntosh. And they only saw her on a few other um, occasions while they were in between other family members. Now, overall, the police interviewed 900 people in the community and took around 767 statements from around the Dominion area. And they even offered a 500 pound reward for anybody that could help them catch the culprit, the person responsible for killing Mr. McIntosh. But nobody came forward and the killer was never found. While all of this is going on, the community itself was in shock. Their bubble their, of bliss and happiness and of trustworthiness completely shattered. The people in the community were scared, were frightened, were nervous. They were getting home early, locking doors, and just insanely frightened and terrified because in their minds, any random stranger could come in and just end your life. So the aftermath of this murder, why it was so shocking is because it literally shut down a whole community. It took a year for things to just begin to start going into some form of normality. I wish that I could give you some answers or something to tie this up but really there are no conclusive leads or anything everything that I've told you is what is out there and if you guys want to read about it I have linked the sources below so go and check them out um, but one thing is I do want to break it down a little bit because there are some things that just don't it up they're they're not making sense to me let's begin by taking it a little bit back to the beginning so william left at 2 30 to go and do his thing and round up the sheep he's gonna come home 3 p.m listen to his rugby game i'm not sure if this was a type of behavioral thing about him that maybe he would get caught up with someone and not come home but this is a farm and his wife didn't notice or didn't get concerned that he didn't come back till seven that's four and a half hours unaccounted for and then a witness said that he called the mcintosh household at 6 25 p.m and mrs mcintosh said that her husband had just gone out to go and round up the sheep and that he would be back home soon. He went out to look for the sheep at 2.30, not just now. And then half an hour later, she called the police to express her concern. And then on top of it, that strange man that no one else had seen but her, okay? And she, no one else saw him. Now, this is 1949 in a tight-knit community. Any stranger that would walk past, you would notice immediately because you wouldn't know them. And no one else had a clue about him. No one else had seen him during the day. Was the guy just waiting behind, just hiding somewhere, waiting for him to leave? Could be. I don't know. But it just seems unusual. And in the weird van, the weird car that nobody saw but this one person and 
even when they were interviewing and there's lots of people in this village on an active day going in and out no one else saw him it just seems really strange and don't get me wrong i'm not trying to point fingers here i'm just trying to make sense of this i would love to know how far the wool shed barn was from the house because william was murdered in like an aggressive way he was literally like hammered down this was an act of anger and frustration to william you couldn't hear a scream no one else like you couldn't hear a scream or anything and the dog was there when they found William they found the dog his dog next to him no one heard a bark or a sound or anything i could just be reading way too much into this because i've been reading the same article over and over and over again but it just seems odd I understand that if the wool shed barn was far far away you couldn't even hear anything and maybe she was just got busy doing things and she didn't hear anything. But all I have to say is that hopefully maybe one day we'll be able to know the truth about what happened to William with DNA testing. We might be able to find something. And the other thing is that a witness said, and I quote, if only that dog could talk, we would probably find the truth about William. So that's it from me today, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think about this one on the comment section below, whether you've heard about it, whether you have the same questions that I do, if not some different ones, I love to read them. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.